Uh, my name is Ellen. I am not the fox that she was referring to, but I'm going to talk about being trans today. Um, and this is my mum here, Kim. Uh, we do only have five minutes each, so I'm going to like really, really try and make this as like, brief as possible. Um, but yes, hello. Um, so growing up, I always knew from from the age where I started interacting with other children, I knew I was extremely different to them. And unfortunately, the other children were going to make that very evident to me, that I was very, very different to them. And I never really knew why this was. Um, I knew that I wasn't particularly happy in life, but I thought that was normal for a three-year-old to kind of feel that way. Um, I was very, very young and experiencing a lot of issues with depression and anxiety. Um, and I wasn't sure why this was. Um, my parents didn't know why this was. Um, I was just a little boy who just happened to see the world differently. Um, and eventually, that all became a bit too much to, to, to deal with at quite a young age. Um, and eventually I became agoraphobic and I had a lot of anxiety issues around being with people and it obviously stopped me from going to school, it stopped me from being a normal child, it stopped me from being the person that I needed to be to develop into, you know, a child and, and then eventually a teenager. Um, and so for a long time it was kind of unknown why I was feeling this way. I always knew that I preferred girl, typically girl things. I know I always preferred to be around girls and to be treated as if I was one of them and feel like I was on par with them. But I didn't know what that meant. And as a three, four year old, you shouldn't really have to know what that means. You're just doing what you want to do to be happy. Um, and so I started to realise that all of my happy places were centred around girl-centric things. Um, and my parents just assumed that I was just, you know, a little gay boy child. And that was okay. Um, and eventually, I, as I was getting older, I realised that actually sexuality had nothing to do with it. Um, I was a child, I wasn't even thinking about things like that. It was simply, every day I wanted to be happy, and the only things that would help with that was to see myself in a way that everyone else wasn't seeing me. And so that was incredibly frustrating for me. Um, and at the time, the word transgender wasn't really a thing. It wasn't really spoken about too much. Um, the first trans person I ever heard of was actually um, Nadia from Big Brother, like way, way back in the day. And I remember kind of having a moment where I was I was very, very, unfortunately, suicidal, depressed, um, and I couldn't really see how I would carry on at all. And this was about the age of six. Um, and unfortunately, I started self-harming when I was six years old. I started imagining what, how, how I would go about ending it all, because I couldn't do it. I was being beaten up every day at school. I was being verbally abused, not by children, but also by adults. Um, because I was different and they didn't want me to change the way that their child saw everything. Um, and so eventually my parents knew that if they didn't find out what was wrong with me, um, that I wouldn't be here. And so my parents figured out about what the diagnosis for being trans meant, but they didn't realise that that was a thing that could happen within children. They didn't think that that could happen so early. Um, and I remember having a moment where they sat me down and they, they told me a story about a, uh, a trans woman who was a lot older. And I just had this click moment where I was like, this is it, like, this is exactly what I'm thinking. Although that this is so different because she's older, I just had that moment. Um, and I'm so, so grateful for the parents that I do have because they allowed me to explore my gender identity. They allowed me to find like I belong somewhere, people with a thing for. Um, <laughs> and I just, and life wasn't particularly easy. Like it wasn't legal in the UK to transition at such a young age. 
Um, I medically transitioned and socially transitioned when I was 11 years old. Um, I was, I think, at the time, the youngest in the UK to do so. Um, but it wasn't legal in the UK, so we had to go over to America, um, which wasn't particularly easy financially or emotionally. Um, and I didn't, I, I didn't have the best time in school, but I knew eventually one day I will belong and I would start to belong. Um, and that's what I had to keep on holding on hope to. Um, and now I'm 21 years old. Um, I like to think I'm a very happy person. I like to think that I wear all of my experiences as a badge of honor and of like strength. And what I've been through has completely made me into the person I am. And I'm so grateful that I had the parents that I did because I don't think I would be here. Um, and also for the charity of mermaids, which my mom's gonna talk about. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. I had a child who was getting herself stuck. She wouldn't come out of her room, she wouldn't go out, she hated herself, she hated her body parts, which she's probably forgotten about, but she absolutely hated herself uh, and her body. And, uh, you know, we didn't know what was going on, why, why was this? Um, so I had to do lots of research and Googling, and then we talked, and um, we also, I also watched a program with you once, I don't know if you remember. And, you, and that's when you said, that's me, that's me, I'm a girl, I'm a girl, and I need to be a girl. Why are you treating me like a boy, I'm not a boy. And so um, I literally Googled, my boy wants to be a girl, because I didn't know what else to do. Um, and came up with lots of weird sites, but I came across <laughs> Mermaids. Um, and Mermaids is a charity that supports um, parents and carers and young people who are questioning their gender, have gender dysphoria. Um, and that's when, you know, for us, because she was, as she said, she was self-harming at the age of eight, I think it was, she threw herself downstairs with a knife so that she could kill herself, because she said, going down the stairs without me doing anything. Um, and I found lots of notes in her little handwriting saying that she doesn't want to be alive. And I thought, you know what, I'd rather have that daughter than the dead son. And that was our defining moment. We thought, we've got to do something. We can't carry on like this. Um, as a parent of a trans child, you have to become an educator. Because go to my GP, oh, it's just a phase. Just a phase, don't know anything about this. She needs to go on to the mental health service. She's, you know, can you get her there? We've done it before. Oh, it's just because she's been bullied at school. Nobody wants to know. You know, and I had to keep educating and I had to print off research and take it to my GP and say, please, can you read this? Because this is what my daughter's displaying. Uh, and eventually, you know, they, they cottoned on. Um, but Mermaids for me is, I phoned up the helpline and I spoke to another mum and that was just amazing. Somebody I could actually talk to and say, this is what my child's doing. And they understood because it's not the sort of thing you can talk about in the playground with bug moms because they don't understand. And your friends can sympathise, but they don't understand. Um, also, we went along to the hold residentials four times a year, and we went along, and this is the first time I had actually met anybody else that was like her, a young child that was like her, and made so many friends, um, had a whole weekend where she could just be totally herself. I didn't need to, to worry about what people were saying, what they were judging, because believe me, we've heard it all. There's nothing anyone can say to upset us, because we've heard it all. We literally have. Everyone blames me, it's my fault. Just make her be a boy. Just do, you know, I've heard it all. Um, so mermaids is so important for that reason, to get other children and other parents together. They also educate, so they go into schools and do some training now. Um, there are lots and lots of children out there who don't have supportive parents. And recent Stonewall um, research showed that 45% of trans young people attempt suicide. 
That's huge. That is a big number. Um, and it's even higher than that, that actually um, self-harm. So it's so important that these children are supported somewhere. Um, so, yeah, my maths is amazing and brilliant. And when Ellen first came out, I was scared. I was really scared because I didn't know what sort of life she was going to have. I was scared about the bullying. Would she ever get a job? Would she, you know, ever have a relationship? All these worries that you go through as a parent. And now, I am immensely proud. I am so proud of my daughter. Um, because, she, yeah, she's 21, she's got a really good job. She works for mermaids as a role model. Uh, so these young kids can actually see somebody is successful. And um, it's beautiful. And so, yeah. I, I also co facilitate a parents group in Brighton called um, Under the All Sorts Branch as well. So if there's anybody local who wants to speak to anyone, we are there as well. That's it, I think. <laughs>